Hey, this is OXDF, and today I'm looking at Burp Suite, Foxy Proxy, how I use them together to go after a web target on Hack the Box or otherwise. Um, Burp is an incredibly powerful tool. It's a web proxy, so the idea is that I will have Firefox send all my traffic through Burp, and it can record, modify, change, um, hold for me, um, and very, interact with in different ways um, these web requests, and then the responses come back. It can also it also records and potentially modifies those. Um, I'm not going to do an overview of Burp. There's a ton of great resources on the internet about how to use Burp. I just wanted to show how I set things up so that it's easiest for me, and so that when you read a blog post and you see me saying, oh, I noticed in Burp that, or I then kicked it over to Repeater and did this, that you have some idea what I'm talking about. Um, so uh, with that, I'll uh, get started. Um, if you're running a, a distribution like uh, Parrot or Kali, um, they, Burp will be pre-installed. Um, I'm actually setting up a new Ubuntu VM today. Um, it, I've already installed Burp, but just to show you, it, you know, it's super easy. Search for Burp Suite on Google. Uh, grab this port swigger link here under products, uh, community edition. There is, there are paid editions. Um, they have lots of features that I don't use, but I'm sure it could be very use valuable. Um, but the, the community edition works fine for me. Um, click here, you can get the download, um, and you're going to get a SH script to run and install it. Um, and then once you're done, you know, you run that, it'll show up and be up here in the menu. Uh, if I search for burp, it'll come up right here. Um, because I basically am using burp at all times, so if I'm doing anything with Hack the Box, for example, it's going to run through burp. So I basically always have burp running. Um, I will, I can grab it here and drag it up and drop in my quick launch bar. Um, I can launch it from there, um, and uh, it'll work. Um, because I'm using the free version, um, temporary project is my only option here. Um, burp defaults works fine. Um, Burp uh, has really tiny text by, def by default. I actually came in here under user options, display, and up to those to this kind of larger font. Hopefully it's view visible to you on YouTube. Um, it makes it look a little bit awkward and compressed in places. It didn't, it's not meant to be run with such big text, um, but I think it's better that way. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, there's a few windows that I really use when I'm looking at Burp. The first one is the proxy. This is the, the, the guts of what Burp is. It is a proxy. Um, here on the intercept window, this will show, so if I go to visit a website and intercept is turned on, it'll actually catch the request right here and hold it here until I click drop or forward. Um, or I can modify it and then click one of those as well. Um, right now, intercept is off. If I click this button, it's now on. Um, so it's as easy as that button to turn it on and off. Um, one of the things by default, Burp always starts up with intercept on. Uh, it actually drives me crazy because I will often forget about it, be trying to load a website going, why is this website not loading? Why is it taking so long? And then finally, I remember it's in Burp. Um, so under user options, misc, uh, you can come down here under proxy interception and I have it uh, enable interception at startup. I set it to always disable. The default is always enable. You do whatever you like. I'm just making you aware that it's there. Um, so that's the intercept window. Uh, the HTTP history window is probably where I spend most of my time. Um, as I start to make requests to websites, they'll show up in here and I'll give you a demo in a minute. Um, if you ever are dealing with WebSockets, the WebSocket history is useful. Um, and it's worth being aware of the proxy options as well. Um, by default, there is a single listener that is listening on localhost 8080, um, but I could add another one, um, and you can do all different things with different listeners. Um, by default, there's no redirect. So, for example, um, let's say, but I but I could set up a redirect. I guess is the point. If I wanted to um, have a, a listener that went through Burp and then everything got sent to this one port on this one host, I can do that. I would just put it in here, and then it would override. Then I could just send my request directly to that port and um, to localhost that listening port, and it would go through to the target. Um, by leaving no by leaving no redirection, um, basically then if I have, you know, I have to have Firefox or, or my script proxying through Burp, and then it handles the, you know, where is it actually intending to go? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so I don't need to add a new listener here. Um, there are other cool things you can do here in the options. Um, you can intercept client requests or server responses. Um, and make modifications. Um, oh, see, so here's where you do that. Um, here's where you pick what gets intercepted. Um, 
there's modifications as well to responses, etc. Um, you can do a match and replace. Um, so if you wanted to, you know, there's been times in the past where um, you get the, a site is sending back a 302, but it's also sending back the full page. And so maybe I just want to replace 302 found with 200 OK, and then I faked as if I bypassed a login. Um, you can do that here and match and replace. Um, so the other window that I use a lot is the repeater window. Um, so I can come back here either at a intercepted uh, request or at the, in the HTTP history, and, and I'll show an example of this later, but I can grab it and I can send it over to repeater. And then here I can send the same request um, over and over again. And let's say I want to test for SQL injection. I can try adding a single quote, single quote um, or you can start to build out your command injection, or you can, you know, once you get a command injection working, you can make, change the command and run it again and see the output and really quickly see the results of different commands. Um, so the repeater window is really useful for that. Um, so there's my quick two minute inter overview of burp. Um, what I really wanted to show today is how I get to burp. Um, so in Firefox, um, you can go into the settings. You're probably never going to do this, but just so you're aware of the core functionality, uh, search for proxy and come here and you can manually configure a proxy. So you can say, send my HTTP requests through this HTTP localhost port 8080. You can say also, also send my HTTPS requests um, through the same through this same one, um, or I could set up a separate one for just HTTPS. Um, it is important to note this HTTPS traffic is still going to an HTTP URL um, because Burp is going to receive it on the non-secure version, and then if it's meant to go HTTPS, it'll wrap it up and send it over TLS as necessary. Um, but either way, the Burp listener is not speaking HTTPS, so you don't want to get confused there. Um, all of that said, it doesn't matter for here because you're not going to use this. Um, it's a jet, you could set it this way, but then it's used for everything you're using in Firefox. Um, if you try to go to Google, it's going to, Google hates being proxied and it's going to complain. It's going to com not work. Um, it's going to look terrible. You're going to come back in here. You're going to turn it off. It's a lot of steps to do. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to use Foxy proxy. And so we'll go to Foxy proxy here. This is a um, Firefox plugin. There's Chrome versions as well. I uh, will add it, add it here. It was added, great, I can close this, close this. Um, so by default right now, um, the, if I click on Foxy Proxy up here at the top, there's nothing here, there are no proxies. So I need to configure it. So I'll click on the options and I'll come here and I'll click add and I'll create a new burp, new proxy. I'll call it burp, it's an HTTP proxy. Uh, the address is 127.0.0.1. The port is 8080. I don't need to use a name or a password and I can save. Um, this is where a lot of people get to, I mean, I think almost everyone uses Foxy Proxy or something like it if they're using Burp, um, but a lot of people stop right here. Um, and I can see right now I made a typo. It's not 127, 27, although that would probably work. Um, let's save that there. Um, and then what I can do with just this much so far is I can come here and I can say, okay, I want to go to Google. Uh, okay, now I want to go to Google through Burp. Let's try, let's watch it yell. Uh, it does not like this. Um, and Google doesn't even let you advance and go through. Um, but because what happened is now that I'm going, now that my, my request is being intercepted, um, Google's detecting that the TLS is being broken. It does not like that. It's very sensitive to that. And it's saying, no, this isn't safe. Um, so I could turn it back off and control shift R to refresh and I'm back in Google. I don't know how I got seasonal holidays in there, but great, um, I'm at Google. That works. But for me, what I like to do is configure this a little bit more and to use this top option, use enabled proxies by pattern and order. And so what you got to do is come in here and for each proxy that you have set up, there's a patterns option. You can come in here. And what this is going to do is I'm going to define when I use, when I use burp and when I don't. Um, there's a weird bug here that I have to, you have to add all the rows you're going to add before you start typing. If you type, if you fill in one and then click add, it resets it. I don't, I can't explain why, but it's to just add a bunch of rows and then, then start typing. Um, so let's say I got hack the box. Um, I'm going to take anything that's 10.10.10.star. .10 um, this is a wild card. There is more complicated regular, regular expression. I've had not great luck with it. Um, so I'm just going to stick with these kind of blunt wild card expressions. Um, you do need a star on the front. Um, I want it to intercept all HTTP and HTTPS, and I want it to be enabled. Um, and so I, that one looks good. Um, I have another one I'll call HTTP, and this time I'll do 10.10.11.star because we've overrun the 10.10.10 .10 .10 .10, uh, IP space. Um, 
Let's see, now I've got some H Hack the Box DHCP servers. So if you ever do release arena or if you pay for VIP plus, um, you might get something in the 10, 10, 129 area. So we'll make sure to add that in here. Um, and then I'm gonna have um, a Hack the Box URL, or I guess not URL, but domains. Um, and so I'll do star dot hack dot HGB star. And so now anything that's um, matching that will come through. Um, when I was doing OSCP, I had a whole set of patterns in here for um, OSCP stuff that I wanted to go through burp. Um, and I specifically had a blacklist in for some of the stuff I didn't want to go through. Um, like the, I forget what they call it, but the dashboard, the controls machines and stuff. Um, so you can set up as many of these as you want. And when you're done, you hit save. And now um, I'm back here. I'm enabled by proxies, by enabled by patterns. And if I just go to, you know, um, cnn.com, you know, major website, it loads just fine. Um, this is not the most reliable, but it shows it shows red here because it's not actually using Foxy Proxy. Um, and if I look in Foxy Proxy under the, or look in Burp under the proxy history, there's no history. Um, if I, let me real quick, just uh, clear out some history to make sure I don't uh, have any cache here. Sure. Um, if I go to, I've got the seal web uh, box fired up and hack the box. It was recently retired. Um, I believe it's 250 and I believe it's an HTTPS site. Um, so I'm going to get my normal HTTPS. It doesn't like the certificate. I've come down here. Um, I can, it's interesting. I can actually view the certificate and it's using a port swigger. Um, that's the company that makes burp, um, certificate. Um, but it's also showing the seal.htb site as well. Um, so you can actually add your certificates, add the port swigger certificates to Firefox so they don't show up here, but let's see, we'll accept the risk and continue for now. And you can see right away as the site is loading, um, the history is populating. Um, so I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, and what's cool about this is now what I can do is I can just come here and say, you know, I'm gonna click around on this website. Um, that didn't really do anything. Here's a contact us page. My name, OXDF, OXDF, seal that hack the box, numbers, and let's see if we can cross site script. The bold tag like that and send. All right, I don't see anything about whether that's sent or not, but it will. That'd be fine for now. Let's see, enter my OXDF at AOL.com or AOL.com. Okay, nothing particularly interesting there. Let's see, here's another form. We'll interact with it. Um, green beans. And we'll add a single quote to see if we can catch, you know, some sort of SQL injection. Um, so now I can I can come here and I can browse around this site and I can explore the site, try to, you know, manually spider it until I feel like I've seen everything there is to offer. Um, and then I'm gonna come back here and go look at the HTTP history. And so, you know, right away, I'm often looking for post requests because that's probably what those forms were filling in. And I actually don't see any post requests in here, um, but I see these get requests to here's vegetable green beans and here's enter your email equals, you know, OXDF at AO.com. And here's this, this one seems to have the full form in it. Um, and so, you know, for any one of these, I can click on it and I can come down here and Again, the large text mix is kind of awkward, but you can see, you know, here's the request, the HTTP GET request that was sent, and here's the response that came back. Um, so when you see in one of my blog posts, I say, oh, let's look, let's look at the tech stack and look at the headers and see what we find. Um, I'm, I'm probably in burp looking at the what you know as I was scrolling around, what kind of headers were coming back. And so here's my Nginx header. I'm sure I'm sure Nmap picked that up. Um, but if this was, you know, there might be other interesting things here. I might be looking for a cookie getting set or a cookie being sent um, that would have been set somewhere. Um, this is probably not the best example because I'm not actually getting, um, there's not actually anything as far as I know, exploitable on this website. Um, but you know, I can get a feel for things. Um, I can also look and say, oh, I want to look at those form submits. Um, so it was, you know, looks like all of them are going to question mark and then a veg, you know, vegetable equals green beans, enter your emails equals this. Um, and right away I can notice all of them are returning the same length. So. 19966, 19966, 19966, which is the same length as just requesting the root on its own. Um, that's not, that's, there's no guarantee that means the server's not doing anything with it, but it just does mean the server's sending back the same page either way. And that's a pretty good indicator that this, especially in a hack the box context, that um, this is a dead form that's just sort of there to look nice, but it's not actually implemented. Um, but let's say I wanted to check it further. Um, so I've got this vegetable search, right? 
if I right click anywhere in here and do repeater, uh, and then go over to repeater, um, I've got, now I get the request here and the response over here. And so I can send this and look at the response. Um, I can say, okay, what, you know, what if I wanted to check for, put a command injection? I don't, I don't know why command injection would be here, but let's just see if, let's see if it could happen. So I could do a ping minus C1, uh, 10.10.14.6 and send this and see what happens. <clears throat> I get a 505 error. That's, that's interesting. Uh, it's probably because I need to URL encode this. They kind of highlight that, highlight that and push control U to URL encode, send that again. Now I'm getting back at 200. Um, and so, you know, I could open up TCP dump, sudo TCP dump minus I ton zero ICMP. So now I'm just filtering on ICMP traffic and I could send this and make that really big and nothing. I didn't get pings back. If I'd gotten pings back, you would have seen it. Um, it would have looked like that's uh, 10, 10, 14, six. So here, you know, you see in this case, pings coming in. So um, that's, that's a long way of saying um, there's no command injection here, which is not surprising. If you've done this box, you'd know that. But um, the point is you can do those kinds of tests here very quickly and you can look for responses. We can see that even with, um, you know, this command injection, we're still seeing exactly one, nine, nine, six, six bytes. Um, we could check for, let's see, what about um, double quote, you know? Oh, okay. We got a, we got a 400 bad request and we're getting actual errors here, which I wasn't actually expecting. So, um, it's an invalid character in the request target. Um, so just with this, I can, I can get some information about that. It's using this uh, coyote package. Um, this is a Java, uh, application. So this all might be somewhat interesting in my enumeration, not the point of this talk, um, or video. I'm guessing if I URL encode this, um, what is it? Present two, two and resend. Now I'm back to 200. So that it's, it was just throwing an error. It wasn't actually doing anything with it. It was in the pre-processing that was causing that to be an error. Um, so, but anyway, that's not the point. Um, the point is I can, you know, this is where, because I've got these patterns set up, um, I can fire up a site, you know, Nmap shows me there's a web server. I go right there in Firefox. I can play around a little bit and then all my history is saved for me. You know, what have I been doing? Oh, okay. It's right here. I can go through and look for interesting requests. I can go through and look at the headers to look for what might be going on. Um, and uh, it's there. It's, and, you know, I don't have to think about it or set it up. Um, the one caveat to that is that Burp will break things occasionally. Um, so it's always worth having in the back of your head that if something's not working like you expect, try turning Burp off and trying it again. Um, some WordPress sites load really funny through Burp sometimes. Um, you know, the one that really gets me has gotten me twice. Um, NTLM authentication on a Windows server um, breaks in Burp. I do not know why, but it does. And so if you think, if you think, you know, I should be able to authenticate to this site, um, but it's not popping a request for auth or I'm giving it the right creds, but it's not loading, um, try turning Burp off and running it again. Because, you know, you'll waste a lot of time doing that. It's very rare but it's at least worth being aware of. So um, with that, set up Foxy Proxy. It's awesome. Go ahead, spend the few extra minutes and configure your patterns so you don't have to worry about it. And uh, it's totally worth it. So thanks for sticking around till the end and I will talk to you next time. <laughs>